Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Carolyn if you're new here and today I'm doing my April wrap up part two. Um, I will link my part one wrap up down below but I will just be talking about the five books that I read in the second half of the month. I will just go in order of what I haven't spoken about yet. Yes. <laughs> okay, so first up, had to do it, another Moshbeck, Homesick for Another World. This is her short story collection. Guys, <laughs> I love her, but her brain scares me a little bit. Um, so this follows a bunch of characters, um, kind of dip into each of their lives. We follow them through all different sorts of compulsive behavior. Again, it has that kind of signature, nitty gritty, dark, gross, mosh in writing, um, which I love. I'm here for all of that. Um, I just loved it. I kind of marked the beginning with a short story collection like this. I loved all of it together, but there were a few that I just kind of starred in the table of contents as really, really loving. First off, the first one, Bettering Myself. Um, and then I really also loved Mr. Wu, and I also loved No Place for Good People, um, and The Beach Boy. Basically, she just does a deep dive of kind of the darkest crevices of like, humanity. Um, she holds nothing back. We love her for that. Um, I just am like loving Mosh Bag. I already purchased another Mosh Bag after this one in my year of rest and relaxation. Um, it scares me a little bit how much I love her because she writes such like grotesque characters. And really, I love her writing also. Um, I think she really kind of packs a punch with every single word. Um, yes, I really, really love this. And again, it's like a short story collection and all the stories are really kind of separate entities, so you can dip in and out of this one. It doesn't have to be read um, all at once. I, I did read it all at once just because I like finished one and I was like, oh my god, I want to like read about the next um, person, human, that she manages to like make feel like um, completely unknown and um, kind of alien from ourselves. Um, but guys, they're out there. I know <laughs> we have to see ourselves a little bit in some of their impulses and compulsive behavior even when um, we don't want to relate to them at all. So I think truly Mosh Beg's character writing is like unparalleled in the modern age. I just like where does she come up with these people and how does she make them feel so real and terrifying and wonderful and crazy. Um, um, definitely read the short story collection. It's so so fun, so quick, so witty, like quirky vibes but dark and grotesque at the same time has something for everyone. Um, yes. Fantastic. Phenomenal. Gotta love her. I give this one a 4.5 star out of 5. Um, not, there was no story that I didn't love. I just feel like when it's a short story collection, I could have had a full novel of each of these characters. So, love that. Love her. And then I read... What did I read next? Mm, the Wonder by Emma Donahue. So I spoke about this in a vlog where I did a um, used book haul. So this is um, a historical fiction novel about, and set in the 1800s in Ireland, a young girl um, is said to have stopped eating for, I think it's four months that she hasn't eaten a bite of food, and this um, English doctor goes over to Ireland to basically investigate, but essentially she goes down there in her mind to kind of call fraud. So this book definitely kind of plays with the English-Irish conflict and the woman who goes down, Lib, definitely feels, has like an elitist attitude and um, she looks down upon the people that she's studying, but that she's also living with um, because she does move in with this family. The young girl is named Anna. Um, so this is a little bit of a spoiler. So if you're interested in this book, like skip 30 seconds because I don't want to ruin it if you do want to read this. Um, so picking up a book like this with the miracle plot element, I was already taking a risk, right? Because it could go one of two ways. Um, and if it had gone X way, I would have hated this book. Um, but it went, it didn't go that way, um, but I still just kind of felt unfulfilled in this book. Um, it it feels like it was going for an alias grace type of historical fiction, a very mundane, dry, but like bit by bit you're peeling back layers of the characters. I just 
felt like it was all kind of empty and, there was, and it just kind of fell flat for me. I know this book has an audience, like my mom probably <laughs> would love this book. Um, I just, I was already taking a risk with this one and sure it's entertaining, I just feel like it didn't go far enough in any direction, if you know what I mean. So I give this one a two star. I'll probably never think about it, think about it again. Um, yeah, and then there there also was kind of like a very quiet, creeping romance element that just like, we don't need you, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, not a fan. I wanted to have way more political and social and religious commentary. I just need more. And then I read Blueberries by Elena Savage. I did an entire reading vlog dedicated to this book. This is a um, memoir kind of made up of bits and pieces of short stories, essays, um, some poems, basically all kind of building up to Elena Savage's life. Elena, Elena Savage's life. Um, I, this is like an example to me of a perfect book. There's not one thing that I would have changed or that didn't work for me. It has, it talks about almost every single, every single theme that I look for in novels. Um, and she talks about them in her own personal experience, which just kind of makes it so much more profound and moving. Um, again, I talked about it in that vlog, I believe, but I did kind of mark stories that I want to return to often. I think, again, this is kind of a quick book. This is a short story collection. I mean, it's a memoir, but it's a short story collection that you should, or that I would recommend, reading in one full swoop. Um, I wouldn't dip in and out of this one because it definitely has a very strong through line and it is um, basically a book of her life, so it kind of makes sense to read it all. That's kind of one work of art, but I, yeah, loved it. It's all about memory and personhood and how you identify yourself and how you think about yourself, um, kind of womanhood and your relationship to your body and your relationship to things that have happened to your body. Um, yeah, I just kind of thought it was basically perfection. Um, even like some of, I don't know if this is like helpful or not, but if you just look at kind of some of the names of the essays or of the short stories, Museum of Rape, Unwed Teen Mom Mary, Holidays with Men, Friendship with Women, The Literature of Sadness, Anti-Memoir as in Fuck You as in Fuck Me. Like <laughs> if you just saw the table of contents of this book, it would make me want to pick it up. Um, yeah, she's just, I think, an incredible person, an incredible writer, has so much to say, and kind of shows that everybody's story is worth being told, and that we have way more to unpack than we think we do, right? Um, oh, I gave this one a 5 out of 5. Did I say that? I gave this one a 5 out of 5. Yes. Okay. And then a book that I want to preface with saying I liked, but this is one of those times where you have expectations which almost like it's not even fair to the book because it can't live up to your expectations um, and that's outlined by Rachel Cusk first of all please ignore the cover I don't have the sexy shell I'm sure that's why I didn't enjoy this book as much as I should have let's blame the cover um, so yes everyone's talking about this book right now but I will just mention briefly what it is so it is a um, book made up of ten Ten conversations um, with a woman who's going to Greece, I believe, to lead a writing class. Um, so, for example, kind of the first conversation that we're introduced to is when she's on the plane, and um, kind of her seat neighbor kind of sparks up a conversation with her. Sparks strikes up a conversation with her, and essentially they get down like this rabbit hole of sharing all these personal things. Um, which let me just preface with saying is my actual <laughs> nightmare being specifically on a plane but in any sort of like confined small space where you're staying there for a long time and somebody strikes up a conversation with you about all these deep things and it's like that's an actual like absolute nightmare for me <laughs> um I don't know if that sounds mean but like being stuck in a conversation that you just like physically cannot get out of like I remember one time my we were flying I think it was like Disney World or something and my sister got we all had different seats because it was cheaper and my sister um, got off the plane. She's like, oh my god, I sat next to this woman. She told me all about her life and about like her fucked up son and it, we just bonded so much. And I'm like, oh my god, that's like a nightmare. Um, okay, but this book. Um, yes, so 
she strikes up a conversation with this man and then we kind of dip into a bunch of other conversations as she's in Greece. Um, so what to say about this book? Because of like obviously the 10 conversation style of this book, it is a fragmented read, um, but even so it kind of, um, there are kind of through lines again of storytelling of how you define yourself and it kind of has the interesting, um, kind of an interesting way to think about if you went somewhere where nobody knew you and you were only there for a few weeks or whatever, how would you present yourself or what stories would you tell, what light would you kind of want yourself to be put in and how would you describe the people in your bubble and your circle at home um, to make yourself seem better than you are kind of thing. Which is a very interesting thing to think about how if you've had the opportunity to rewrite your story to tell somebody who's kind of like a blank slate, um, how would you tell that story? Which is an interesting idea. Um, and honestly, I really enjoyed the writing of this. I like the fragmented style. I think, for me, I just... Like, each person, because of... I don't know if I'm doing a good job of explaining this at all. Um, because of the conversation structure. Each person that she comes into contact with, that she's having these conversations with, is really just a vessel to talk about X theme, right? About motherhood, about um, marriage, about relationships, about... Um, creating an art, right? They're just, these people are just there for her to like think about these ideas. So it doesn't leave a lot for me to kind of hold on to. Um, you're just kind of flowing through the book onto the next conversation and because you're not forming relationships with these people, they really are just kind of dipping in and out and kind of saying something incredibly profound and moving on. Um, there's not a lot to kind of grasp onto. Um, which is the point of this. So it, <laughs> I think Cusk did that for a very deliberate point. Um, and again, a lot of people have said this book is very pretentious, and I would absolutely agree with that. Um, that in no way affected <laughs> my reading experience. That doesn't really bother me. I, I expected that going in, um, of kind of all these profound conversations and um, of course all the people she comes into contact with are incredibly deep. And, and I enjoyed it, and I um, would read the other books in this series. Is it a series? Um, but it's not on like a time crunch for me, if that makes sense. I liked it. I gave this one a three star, which is still means like I enjoyed the actual reading process, but it's not one that I will be thinking of. And I feel like other books have touched on some of the themes that are mentioned in this book very briefly, and I've kind of read books that have got very in depth on those themes, and that's kind of ones that I would think back to more than this one. But again, I enjoyed it. I just, yeah, I, it was like a nice read, but I'm not going to be thinking about it in the future, if that makes sense. I gave this one, this next one, a four star. I just finished it at work a few hours ago, and I don't know if I will change my reading, but I loved it. So, Lent by Joe Walton. I will briefly tell you what this book is about. So, it is about Girolama Savonarola, okay, don't know if I said his name correctly, but he was a real person, he lived in the 15th century in Florence, and he was a very, very pious man, um, and he kind of got very, very deeply ingrained in kind of the identity and the political movements and pulse of Florence, um, and he kind of ruled through purity and kind of, it, you might know him from like, the bonfire of the vanities. So basically, in real life, Savonarola claimed that he could see and banish demons back to hell. He could um, he could prophesize. He was God revealed things to him that then he would share in these very powerful and um, emotionally aggressive sermons. Um, and basically, in this book, he has every single power that he claimed to have had. Right, so he can see demons and banish them back to hell with just his fingers. Um, God does speak to him and he knows kind of future things that could happen in the future or things are revealed to him and he kind of, he's the vessel through which God speaks essentially. Um, so something to know about me <laughs> for you to understand why I loved this book so, so much. I think everyone can love this book but for me specifically um, I kind of talked about how anything BBC, anything Tudor, history, I, like, will eat that up. I love that stuff. I also specifically love 
Borgia and like medieval Florence, like Medici, the Medicis are obviously a huge part of this book. Love all of that. Um, seriously love that. <laughs> um, for example, I, in college, if you've ever seen the show Borgia, The Borgias on Netflix, in two years I probably rewatched that show five or six times in lieu of like actually dealing with my issues. I, and that's like an absolute ridiculous historical fiction show. Um, it just like so entertaining though. I actually did a whole, um, one of my term papers, we got to like kind of write about what we wanted. Um, it's about, I wrote an entire paper about Lucrezia Borgia, like the o, one of the OG femme fatales. Um, yeah, I just love all that stuff. But, specifically for this book, so that's why I was so interested in this book, because um, Girolamo, they call him just his first name, Girolamo, um, was alive and preaching and came into a lot of conflict with Pope Alexander, or the Borgia Pope. Um, so Cesare is featured in this book, Pope Alexander is featured in this book, they call him the Antichrist. So that's like why I originally picked it up, right? This is like my type of historical fiction. This book, this book is so hard to talk about, my goodness. So it is not just a historical retelling or reimagining. Um, it is that, and I don't want to give any spoilers of this book because you just have to read it. Even if you don't, even if you're not like obsessed with the Borgias and all the gory details of that, um, you, I still think you could love this book. So this book is like Christianity but make it magic. This is a fantasy book in every sense of the word. Um, I can only compare the power of Walton's creation of the historical setting to Mantell, which is like my holy grail of books, the Wolf Hall series, so that's a big compliment. Um, she conjures up medieval Florence so, so well. Um, you're brought into all the monasteries, you're brought into those rooms where big decisions and um, world-altering decisions are being made and that's phenomenal, so, so fun to read. Um, this really flips Christianity on its head, but this book goes in a direction that you will, it's impossible to see it coming, I swear, um, and I don't want to spoil anything for you, but this is a fantastical book. Um, it's also so, so nuanced. She really, the character writing in this is so impressive. It's so smart, and she makes it, like, palatable. Like, you can understand it even if you're not somebody who studies these things or these time periods or these people. Um, so the structure of this book, so smart and so, so fun to read while you're also kind of brought into that historical period that feels so real and so kind of all-consuming. Um, this book is phenom like phenomenal. I know I only give it four stars, and to me, that's just because some points it felt stagnant, but it also makes sense for the plot of the book. You would understand if, if you choose to read this book, you'll kind of know what I mean, I think. Um, but there are points where you're ready for it to speed up again, um, but I think Walton has a lot of ground to lay to make her, the readers understand what's going on and who all these people are and their relationship to each other and um, kind of, and Florence, you, you need to understand everything that's going on in all the movie pieces um, and the religious and political scene. I just, like, oh, guys, I loved this book. I gave it a four out of five. It could very easily move up. It's, I'm like talking myself up into higher rating. All right, so those are all of the books I read in the second half of April. Please let me know your thoughts if you've read any of these or if you just are interested. I would love to chat about them. And let me know your favorite book that you read in April. Um, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please subscribe if you feel so inclined. And I will be back hopefully with a reading vlog very soon. Bye everyone.